there, Linda Goodall here. In this video, we're going to be making in the hoop towel toppers. And I've used a magnetic snap so that it makes it easy to put together. And it comes in three sizes. So this is the smallest one. It is a six by 10 hoop. All of them are the same height. So what you're gonna do is you just need a wider hoop each time. These are not going to fit a five by seven hoop. So sorry about that. So this is the smallest one. It's quilted on both sides, but I only use batting on the front side. I know you can't see the quilting on this because I did it in black. And this is just half of a regular kitchen towel. So I've also done it on these larger ones. This is the largest size. And these are on my recipe towels. And the recipes are separate. They are not included with the project that is the in the hoop topper. And same height as the other one, same magnetic snaps. And I think you can see the quilting on these a little bit better. So we have towels like this, and you can see that I've colored them a little bit. And I'm going to switch to the overhead camera and I'll show you the towels, and then we'll show you what we're gonna need, and then we'll start making it. See you then. Okay, here we are. This is the towel topper. Here you can see the snaps. And if we compare that with this one, you can see they're the same height. So it's the width that's changing for these towels. So this one, I showed you earlier, I've pleated it. This one, you can see the quilting a little bit easier. And I know it's hard because we have black on this darker fabric, but we have a diamond pattern. This side, the front, which is where the front of the towel goes, is batting. The back side doesn't have any batting and that's so that it doesn't cause too much bulk. And also, I have a pretty wide space here because when I tried this on my oven and my dishwasher, I found that they don't have little narrow handles. They have pretty wide handles. So that's why it has to be so tall. Here is the Buckeyes one. You can see that I've colored in some of these areas. This is just colored pencil. Here is the chocolate no bakes. And once again, these are all separate in a separate set. Pecan crunchies. Pepper jelly. Lemon crisp cookies. And chocolate pound cake. And on this one, I pretty much just pleated across the back to get it to fit in here. These are really giant towels. So these were our 38 inch square flower sack towels that I bought from Amazon. I embroidered one on each side and I just cut them in half and then I, I get two towels out of it. So let's see what we're gonna to need to make our towel toppers. So first you're going to print out the included worksheets. And we have a worksheet for the front and the back and we need to sew the back first. So here's the back. There are brief instructions up here. They'll make a lot more sense after you watch the video. And here is the actual size. And you can see the quilting pattern on there. Here is the front. A little bit more work because we're going to add batting here. We're going to trim it back. We're going to stitch the front. And then we're going to place the back side that we've already embroidered down and then we'll stitch around to attach it. Now, if you see these little plus signs, this is where our placement is for our snaps. And once again, we have instructions. And there are quite a few color changes in here, but you can use the same color. I'm just going to use black throughout and I know it's not going to be very easy to see, but I didn't want to use white on this fabric because the white would compete with my swirly pattern. And I just wanted the quilting to be there for a textural effect. So I've got my two pieces cut. The worksheets will tell you what size you need to cut it. And also in the fully illustrated instructions, they'll show you what size. I have the, the other half of my towel. And this time I have gathered it across here. And I, I used a technique I learned from Nancy Zeman on Sewing with Nancy, where you pull up your bobbin thread, make a big long tail, and then you're just going to zigzag over that. And then you can pull that bobbin and you can gather it up. So I've got this one gathered and ready to stick in my towel topper when I'm done. And I have my batting. And I have a few other things here. I have my snaps. You can use cam snaps or you can use magnetic snaps. And I chose to use magnetic snaps because 
you don't have to use any pressure to snap them. You just flip them over and then they get close and they snap themselves. So that's real handy on projects like this. You're going to need some kind of scissors to cut your batting. I like these. And I have a pencil for marking my placement. And I have a little seam ripper to cut open my placement guide. Here we are at the machine. I have my stabilizer already in. It's wash away, tear away. And yes, you can use other ones. You can use wash away fiber. You can use no-show mesh, but this is more economical than either of those. And it'll get washed out over time. So I've sewn my placement line already. And now I just need to take my fabric and place it down. And you just want to make sure that it's over those lines. This outline includes the seam allowance. So I'm not going to treat this like a normal applique. I'm just going to place that down like that. Put the presser foot down. Here's my back, it's all finished. We'll pop it out of the hoop. I know you can't really see the stitching on it. If we look at the back, see if we have some issues going on, but I use black bobbin thread on the back so that the back matches the, the front. And I'm just going to cut this out like this. We hoop my stabilizer so we can stitch the front. Load the next design. And the next step is to sew the placement line. So this placement line also includes the seam allowances. The front is slightly smaller than the back, so that way it makes it easy to place the back without having edges show. Now I'm going to place the batting, and the batting is actually going to be within the seam allowances, so I just need to make sure that it covers those areas. It's easier to trim back if you have it extending evenly on all sides. Now we need to trim away this excess batting. That's going to keep our seam allowances from becoming too bulky. There we have that. I'm just going to take my front fabric, smooth that down over it. And I just need to make sure that I'm extending beyond these seam allowance guides because that'll be trimmed off. Smooth it into place, put it back in the machine, and sew the next color, which will tack it in place and then we'll do the quilting. So the next color that sews is a placement guide. 
And I think I'm going to switch to white so that you might even be able to see this. Kind of hard to do without knocking the camera out of place. So now we're ready to place the back piece. So we'll remove the hoop. And while that was stitching, I cut out my back piece and I fold it in half using my diamonds as the center point. And I just fold it in half like that and I cut a little notch. So I have a little notch there to line up with the center. And even the white didn't show up very well, but there is a white line here so it goes all the way around, does a little jump out there for a white line and a guide, comes around and does this line again. So I, now I know where I need to place this. And I have also little plus signs right here and right here for my snaps. So I'm actually going to put a little spray on this. I have a little box down there. And I'm just going to line this up like this. and press it into place. I didn't get a lot of spray on there, just a little bit to hold it. And now it's going to stitch this to the front. So we'll take it back to the machine. I need to change my color back to black. That's it for the embroidery. So now we'll pop it out of the hoop. And I'm going to cut it out. If you want to, you can use your zigzag scissors, your pinking shears. And just cut along that placement line. kind of hard. I'm going to switch to just the regular scissors, cut off the bottom. Now, this line right here was where our batting ended. So that is going to be where we turn up to. So now we just need to turn it right side out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to finger press open these seams on the side. And then I'll just reach in there, kind of poke in the top and turn it right side out. I'm not going to bother about tearing this out because this is wash away, tear away, and it's not very crisp. It's kind of soft, and it will wash out and degrade over time. It's not like a regular wash away like you would use for lace because it doesn't get that clean, but it will break down over time and get much softer. You want to press out all your seams. Now 
I like to use this to help me press those seams out. Now I did not clip around there. You could clip around there if you're not getting a smooth outline, but I find that using the pinking shears really helps. What I would do next is to press this really well, and I do not have an iron in here, so we're not going to do that step right now. I'm just going to work with my little hair marker here. And the next step is to add the snaps. And we have a little plus sign right there and another little plus sign right there. And that's where the center of our snaps is gonna go. I am putting the snaps on the quilted side. And if you want to, you could put a little piece of stabilizer in there. A nice little piece of cutaway would work well and that's just going to give a little bit more stability to your snaps. I'm just going to take my snap. I'm going to line it right up over that little plus sign and mark it. And mark this one. Then I'll take my seam ripper and hopefully not poke my finger. And I'm only going to poke through the front layer. I'm just going to poke a little bit and then I'm going to push it up and then cut through like that. I'm not slicing like this. I'm just kind of poking it up. And then cutting it. And we'll do the bottom. Once again, you can use a different kind of snap. Just follow your instructions. You could even put a button buttonhole on here. But I like the magnetic ones because they're so easy to use. So we'll take our snap apart. And we're going to put the male one up at the top. I'll just poke that through the guides there. Now I've positioned these so that I shouldn't have to go through any of my quilting stitches. But if you end up going through your quilting stitches, you might want to put some seam sealing on there. So I've got my snap poke through, and now what I have to do is get this one on the back. And it's you just do this by feel. So I've got it on there, and I need to mash it down. And I'm just going to take this screwdriver, put it in there to mash it down, since my fingers aren't strong enough to do that. You can get it just a little bit and smash it down that way. So there's that part. And now we'll do the other side. So take the female snap, put that in there like that. You can see the prong sticking out there. And we'll put this on here like this. And then you're going to fold the little wings out. Now what I need to do is fold up the hem We'll just use some clips to hold it for now. You want to make sure that this is straight and even. And I would definitely press this before I inserted the towel. So you want to press that, get it all nice and flat, and then you're going to take your towel and you have that pressed. Pretend we have it pressed. And then we want to insert our towel in here. 
What I'm doing is I'm just going to line up my towel with the edge of my seam allowance there. So I've got my towel in here and I'll probably want to put some pins in here before I take it to my machine. My other machine that's in the other room so we won't see me do this. And you're just going to edge stitch right along the edge here and then you're done. See how easy that was? Now there are some other ways that you can put your towel together. For example, here is a purchase towel and it has no pleats or gathers across the front. It's done all the pleating in just one pleat on each side on the back. So that's another option that you have. These work great with the little fingertip towels. You can just put the one end in here and then have the other end hanging down and it's easy to have in your bathroom. So these are great. They make quick gifts. They're really fun to make and I hope you enjoyed this project. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and please make a comment. Tell me what you want to do next.